This presentation is the first in a short series of presentations on three important statistical distributions. The instructional design for this presentation was developed by David Kleinbaum, statistician, and Anna Washington, educator, and the narration was done by David Kleinbaum. This is the first of a series of programs that focuses on probability questions about distributions whose specific characteristics are entirely known and whose general form is either binomial, Poisson, or normal. In this program we describe the essential properties of the binomial distribution. In particular, we will consider how to determine probabilities of interest for the binomial distribution by picking out essential characteristics of the distribution and consulting an appropriate table of probabilities. We hope that you are reasonably familiar with the concepts of probability as well as what is meant by a random variable and a statistical distribution. Nevertheless, a quick review will now be presented. Here comes the review train. The hospital setting contains several random variables of interest to the physician, health administrator, and other health researchers. One such random variable might be the number of patients undergoing surgery who experience wound disruption during recovery. If we call this variable X, the total number who have wound disruption, and we observe the next five surgical patients, then the possible values for X are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 patients who can have wound disruption. In this sample, the value of X turns out to be three patients with wound disruption. But if we take another sample, the value of X might be different. We cannot predict for certain that X will take on a specific value like three. However, when we know all the properties of the variable, we can pin down the likelihood of each value occurring as in this distribution table. We can then say that x equal 2 is the most likely value at 35 percent, whereas x equal 1 occurs 26 percent of the time and x equal 3 occurs almost as often. And in usual notation we write such statements using the form probability of x equal 2 equals 0.35. Familiarity with this notation will be crucial throughout this slide series. Notice the capital P with an R stands for probability. A second random variable of interest might arise from a study of the health of workers in a factory. The workers' union might want to find out whether workers in this environment have impaired respiratory function as measured using a spirometer and called forced expiratory volume or simply FEV. FEV measured on a sample of workers may be called the random variable Y. If an unusually high proportion of these workers were found to have poor respiratory function, we might infer that factors in the factory, such as chemical toxins, were impairing the health of the workers. Returning to the variable X of our first example, the number of surgical patients experiencing wound disruption out of five, X is an example of a discrete random variable whose distribution can be represented by a line graph like the one shown. The lines are not connected because only whole numbers of patients are possible. 
that is no values like one and a half patients with wound disruption are possible. In contrast, the variable Y of the second example discussed, which represents FEV measurement in a factory, is an example of a continuous random variable whose distribution is represented by a smooth curve with possible values found anywhere in an interval, including fractions. In graphs of discrete distributions like the one on the left, the probabilities are represented by the heights of lines. For instance, the probability that two out of five patients experience wound disruption is 0.35 in this particular hospital. For continuous distributions like the one on the right, the probabilities are represented by areas under the curve the area under the entire curve being 1. For example, the probability that FEV is below 3 is the shaded area under the curve to the left of 3. We will be finding probabilities for both discrete and continuous distributions in this series of presentations. That's all of the review, folks. The review train is leaving. Now, on to our first important distribution. The remainder of this section focuses on the binomial distribution, an example of which is the distribution of the variable x that we just saw. We will examine the properties of the binomial through this example. For this variable, as for all binomial variables, there are two possible outcomes of interest for each individual. In this case, for each of the five surgical patients, either the patient has wound disruption or he doesn't. The experience for any one patient is called a trial. The number of trials here is 5 and we write n equals 5. The variable x counts the number of patients with the wound disruption out of five trials. Here, x equals two. Here, our specific wound disruption example is presented together with the general binomial terminology. In this specific case, we are dealing with the characteristic wound disruption. We observe five patients who either do or do not experience wound disruption, and we count the number who do, in this case, two. In general terminology, we can consider any characteristic of interest about which we observe n trials. There are two outcomes on each trial, which we have indicated by a plus when the characteristic occurs, and a minus when the characteristic does not occur. To define our variable of interest, we count the number with the characteristic out of the n trials, or in other words, we count the number of pluses. Here are examples of the different forms of several binomial variables. Notice the differences in number of lines and lengths of lines. Notice that some appear symmetric while others tend to lean to the left. However, they are all binomial. So what do they have in common? First, they are all discrete, meaning that they have gaps between possible observations. Second, and most important, each distribution satisfies the same four properties which we will now discuss at length. Later, you will need to check whether these four properties are satisfied in order to decide whether a variable is binomial. Of the four properties of the binomial distribution, we have seen two so far. First, there must be n trials, each having identical external conditions. Second, there are two possible outcomes of interest per trial. The third property of the binomial as it relates to our example 
is that whatever happens to one patient has no influence on whether any other patient will have wound disruption. In other words, we must be willing to assume that patients don't develop wound disruption from one another. In general, this property states that trials are independent of one another. The fourth property focuses on the individual patient and says that the probabilities that individual patients will have wound disruption are equal. Thus, if our variable is to be binomial, we must assume that this probability P is more or less the same for each individual. And we must know specifically what this probability is in order to specify the exact form of the distribution. What is P for our example? To answer this, we might wish to carry out a new study for this purpose. However, a suitable choice of P might be derived from records of surgical patients in our hospital. If the records show that the proportion of patients with wound disruption over the past year is 0.4, we could hypothesize that P equal 0.4 now. We would then be assuming that the probability of wound disruption for each patient is 0.4. When all four properties are satisfied, we can say that the general form of the distribution is binomial. We can confirm that many other discrete random variables are binomial by observing that they satisfy these four properties. For example, the number of successful operations out of 20, the number of people out of a sample of 50 who develop lung cancer, and the number of people in a sample of 10 favoring a particular political candidate. The general form of the distribution for each of these variables is binomial. To determine the specific form of a binomial distribution, we need only consider the first and last properties which concern N and P. These two terms, N and P, are called the parameters of the binomial distribution. Parameters are like height and waist measurements which identify the particular shape of a probability pattern. All distributions have parameters which must be specified to define their precise form. For all binomial variables, the parameters are n, the number of trials, and p, the probability associated with each individual trial. The usual notation used to identify binomial variables is bin parentheses n comma p close parentheses although sometimes the in in bin is left off this expression summarizes the crucial information about the distribution when numbers are inserted such as n equal to 5 and p equal to 0.4 we have specified a particular exact distribution now let's see how these parameters control the shape of the distribution. We'll look at our familiar distribution first in terms of what happens as n gets larger and p stays the same. Here's the familiar pattern with n equal to 5 trials and p equal to 0.4. This gives the probabilities associated with the six possible outcomes of our wound disruption example. Here is the distribution which results when n is increased to 10 patients instead of 5 using the same individual probability p equal to 0.4. There are now 11 possible outcomes ranging from 0 to 10 patients with wound disruption. Here are the same two distributions just described and a third added at the bottom where n equals 20 patients. As n increases from 5 to 10 to 20, 
we find the pattern changing somewhat as there are more lines of shorter length making up the distribution. Also, the center of the distribution is shifted to the right as n increases. This is how n controls the distribution. But how does the other parameter, p, control the distribution? Look at these three binomial distributions going across from right to left. This is what happens when p gets smaller, given that n stays the same. As p gets further away from 0.5, the shape of the distribution leans more to the left, or is more skewed or asymmetric. This is true in both directions from 0.5. For values of p larger than 0.5, the lean is in the opposite direction. At this point, you may be more than ready to learn how to solve some problems. How, for example, would you get a result like 0.35 for x equal 2 in the first place? Would you believe that such probabilities have been derived theoretically through application of fundamental rules of probability theory and then calculated from the theoretical formula? Fortunately, they have all been compiled in binomial tables and all you, the applied user of statistics, have to do is use binomial tables like the ones in your text to look up the exact probabilities for various n's and p's and x's. To use a binomial table, we must know and specify n and p and the value of x whose probability we seek. We will proceed by looking up such a probability using the same parameters n equal 5 and p equal to 0.4, but we'll look up x equal 3 instead of x equal 2. Here is the binomial table similar to those which can be found in most statistics texts. First look up n equal 5. Then look up p equal to 0.4. Third, look up x equal 3. The intersection of the correct row and column gives the binomial probability of 3 out of 5 patients having wound disruption given that p equals 0.4. The answer is 0 0.2304. While on the table, notice that p only goes up to 0.5 or 50% and that n only goes to 20. What will you do with a higher individual probability or a larger number of trials? Notice in this illustration that when we get up to a sample size of 50, the binomial distribution looks very much like the normal distribution even though it's discrete. As the sample size n increases, the binomial distribution gets more and more like other distributions and probabilities can be computed using such distributions. We will save this question of how to compute probabilities for the binomial with large sample size until we get to these other distributions. However, values of p larger than 0.5 can be handled easily with a simple formula which converts the probability question to consider values of p smaller than 0.5. The basic idea for dealing with large values of p is shown here. Since the binomial distribution always deals with a dichotomous situation on each trial, we can work from either side of the dichotomy to answer the same question. If, for example, we have a probability question concerning p equal to 0.6, we can answer it by restating this question in terms of p equal to 
So when you have a value of P greater than 0.5, you should subtract P from 1 and work with the opposite side of the dichotomy. Just how you can equivalently work with either side of the dichotomy is illustrated here. If the question asks for the probability that 3 out of 5 patients will not have wound disruption when the probability of no wound disruption is 0.6, the solution is exactly equivalent to the probability that 2 out of 5 patients do have wound disruption when the probability of wound disruption is 0.4. That is, 3 out of 5 patients without wound disruption is the same as 2 out of 5 with wound disruption. And if the probability of not having wound disruption is 0.6, then the opposite probability is 0.4. Here is another example. If you want to find the probability of 4 out of 7 having some characteristic with p equal to 0.8, you cannot use the binomial tables. But if you deal with the other side of the dichotomy, P is 0.2, which you can look up. The equivalent question here then becomes finding the probability of getting 3 out of 7 for P equal to 0.2. Thus, the formula to be used when P is greater than 0.5 is replace p by 1 minus p and replace x by n minus x. We were then working with the opposite side of the dichotomy, but the answer will be equivalent. And you can now find your answer from the binomial tables in the usual way. To work out an example involving this conversion formula, suppose you are thinking of questioning four patients at a health clinic about their satisfaction with the care they have received. Let Y be the number satisfied. And suppose we already know that throughout the clinic's recent records, 70% of the patients have been satisfied. Suppose the question you wish to ask is what is the probability, given the recent experience of the clinic, that three out of the next four patients will be satisfied? Before solving, however, we should first ask, is the number of people satisfied with health care a binomial random variable? Checking out the four binomial properties, we first see that there are four trials specified, and that since each patient comes from the same clinic, we may assume these trials to be more or less identical. Secondly, the outcomes of interest on each trial are dichotomous, satisfaction versus lack of satisfaction. Thirdly, the trials are independent, since we may assume that each patient's experience is not influenced by any other patient's experience. Lastly, based on recent records, it seems fair to assume that each trial has more or less the same probability of 0.7. Therefore, we can assume the distribution of Y is binomial. We thus have a binomial random variable with an N of 4 and P of 0.7, and we will find the probability that Y equals 3. Since P is equal to 0.7, which is greater than 0.5, we have to use the conversion formula we just learned, where we must replace P by 1 minus P and Y by N minus Y. We fill in the numbers in the conversion formula and subtract to get a new P and Y to look up in the binomial table. Thus, we change P equal to 0.7 to 1 minus P equal to 0.3 and our y of 3 to n minus y equal to 4 minus 3 equals 1, so that we can work with the opposite side of the dichotomy with a p that can be found in the table. Thus, after converting, for n we look up 4, for p look up 0.3, and for y, which is treated like x in the table, we look up 1. The answer is 0 0.4166.
We are now essentially finished with part one. However, before concluding, we suggest you try the first problem in your viewing study guide as practice. The problem asks you to find the probability that in a sample of 10 male adults from some community, at least five persons favor school busing, given that 25% in the entire community are in favor of busing. Find this probability as soon as the presentation is complete. Here is a summary of the procedure you will use. First, check the four properties to see if the variable is binomial. Second, find the parameters n and p. Third, look up the probability of interest using n and p in the binomial table. Part 1 is now finished. Before proceeding to other programs in this series, we suggest that you complete the review questions and test in the viewing study guide on the binomial distribution that accompanies this program.